So last but not least, let's talk about compliance within GRC. So compliance is essentially the process of adhering to a requirement that's levied upon the organization externally or internally. Externally, this can come in the form of some legal framework. We are a health organization, so we have to adhere to the HIPAA compliance standard. So we have an external compliance that does have legal implications if we don't adhere to it. We can have internal compliance requirements. Maybe the organization drafted policy in how we deal with or manage our cloud assets. How do we deal with cloud security? So if we're not meeting the standards of our internal cloud security policy, we can imagine GRC is going to have a problem with new products and services we're trying to push into the cloud that don't even meet the organization standard. They're not going to approve those businesses or those business lines to operate. Sometimes non-compliance of these frameworks, particularly external ones, can lead to criminal uh, issues. Uh, there have been cases where people have fraudulently uh, fudged numbers. Think of financial institutions, banks have to adhere to strict financial compliance and regulation. So manipulating the data, the standards, or uh, to what degree of compliance the organization is in in regards to that that requirement can lead to criminal uh, charges being brought upon an organization or individuals there can be financial uh, retribution or fallout from not being compliant you can lose your compliance standing you might only have business with a certain market segment because you are compliant with a certain um, requirement but if you become non-compliant you will lose money one example of that is the PCI DSS, which is the payment card industry compliant requirement. It ensures that an organization, before they can process payment card data, they must have a limited uh, or a minimum set of security in place. So if an organization is processing payment cards and they don't maintain their compliance and they lose their compli compliance standing, well, they can't process card payments. If they can't process card payments, they're not making money. You could lose your business license or your ability for your business to operate. So there's a lot of real world fallout and quantitative impact to an organization for not being compliant. Non-compliance is not an option in many industries. It would be a death knell to be non-compliant. For compliance to be effective, just like everything else we've talked today, you've got to have monitoring and we conduct internal auditing. So if we know what the compliance standards are, what is expected of us, we must monitor how effective we are in meeting or exceeding that standard, and we will do an internal audit to test our controls against that compliance. To become compliant or to get a validation of compliance, we would use an external auditing partner to conduct an audit. So this is usually a third party will come in and evaluate the organization against all the required controls to ensure that in fact the organization is compliant to the standard. They're the ones that you know put the stamp of approval that you've meet or exceed the standard as set forth in whatever compliance framework you must comply with. So let's talk about a few of the more common compliance standards that you may hear about or read about when you're looking for jobs in the cybersecurity industry. First and foremost, we have the HIPAA or Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. The HIPAA compliance standard requires that organizations that handle individuals' medical records adhere to a minimum set of security and policy standards for how those records are handled, transmitted, stored, and secured. HIPAA was created primarily to support insurance companies as in individuals would move from one insurance carrier to the next. There was no standard in how medical records and uh, insurance details were transferred from one carrier to the next. So HIPAA came about to ensure that insurance carriers, hospitals would protect individual medical records and how those records were handled. As I said before, the PCI DSS payment card industry data security standard is just that. It is a standard on how an organization secures its systems, information, and processes regarding payment card processing. The Sarbanes-Oxley Act, or SOX, 
is a required audit of financial institutions that have to provide proof of accurate data secured financial reporting. So this is very important in the banking finance sector where uh, manipulation of financial records could lead to severe fines and criminal charges. So it's very important that the organization itself protects its data to ensure that an internal threat, disgruntled user or somebody who's looking to cause harm or profit unnecessarily does not manipulate financial data, but it also ensures that financial data is protected from external threats that would uh, change or manipulate that data so that organizations can be accurate in their reporting. Then we have the very popular GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation. GDPR is a European Union legal framework, uh, and essentially it ensures that the privacy of EU citizens are taken into account and provided utmost importance when data is collected by businesses. So think about every time you go online, every time you shop, every free service you use, they're collecting data about your device, your user behaviors, what you do, where your interests are, times of activity, your location, and many, many other data points. GDPR is really one of the most robust and forward-leaning regulations or compliance frameworks that force businesses to not only disclose how your personal data is used, but it puts severe restrictions or penalties on non-compliance. So maybe not as well known as GDPR or SOX or PCI DSS, we have SOC. SOC is essentially a compliance framework that ensures that organization adheres to a base set of security standards and processes to protect that information. Many security providers are SOC compliant as they're dealing with another organization's internal data about their systems, behaviors, events, users, and business processes. We want to make sure that that data is protected and SOC 1, 2, or 3 compliance standards ensures that if you're going to a provider and they're compliant with those standards, that they have a well-known and regarded minimum level of security to protect your data. An example of compliance standards that some organizations have to adhere to is probably no better shown than from Amazon Web Services. Here's just a little more than half of the compliance standards that Amazon Web Services adheres to. There are some that they must meet simply for the fact that they are doing business, but most of these are because they offer cloud-based services to industries that require their own certification. You can't sell cloud services to the government if you don't meet government standards such as FedRAMP, ITAR, DOD SRG. Some of these compliance frameworks ensure that when you want to sell cloud services, customers in the government can purchase those services. So this is just an example of the compliance standards that Amazon has to adhere to. You can follow the link and look at some of the other ones. Many organizations that you might buy security products from have to be compliant to some of these standards. And it's a good thing to ask any business you work with or that you might buy products from what compliance frameworks they are in compliance with. So in summary, governance is key, absolutely critical to an effective security strategy and program. Some organizations aren't big enough to have a chief information security officer or a CIO or a CSO. They might not even have a CTO. So an organization that's smaller doesn't really have a security program. They might not have a security strategy. And that's a problem when it comes to small businesses that they are very vulnerable to attacks because they don't have a cohesive plan of action on how to deal with that. There are also large organizations that don't have a GRC plan. They don't have a CISO. So you have that on the other end of the spectrum where you have a very large organization that may or may not be more lucrative to a certain type of threat actor, and there's still no really clear GRC process. At the end of the day, without GRC, regardless of who's conducting it and managing it, there is no strategy for how we manage risk in the organization. Another hard truth, one that a lot of people are sort of sad to realize, is that good security, really good security, starts with plans, paper, and people. It's not tools, it's not cool technology. Sure, those things help, but we can't know where to apply our tools if we haven't done a risk assessment. If we don't have a risk management process, how do we know we're getting better? 
if we have if we don't have the right people we can't do a risk assessment and a risk management program if we don't have governance nobody's going to do any of those things to make sure that it gets done that the tools are that we need are acquired that the tools we acquired are put into the right place to be effective because we understand our risk if we didn't do all those things we're not getting anywhere risk management requires key stakeholders right we don't always own the systems and services we're trying to protect it may be owned by a different business unit if we're not bringing in those stakeholders, those system owners, those project managers, if we're not bringing them into the loop and they're not aware of what we're trying to do, the answer is going to be no. No, you can't update our system. No, you can't bring it down online. No, you can't put a firewall in front of it. No, you can't do these things because it affects our bottom line. So if we're not educating our customers within the company that we work with, if we're not bringing them on boarding, empowering them with knowledge and showing how security can help make their business more secure, then it's going to be really, really hard to enact a governance strategy within the organization. And again, I think this is one of the things most organizations are really good at. They're really good at understanding noncompliance and the impact of noncompliance. But I want to say one last thing here. Being compliant does not mean secure. Compliance just means you have a certain set of controls in place. It does not usually measure how effective those controls are. So when an organization says we're compliant, they're not saying anything about us being secure. So keep that in mind. Compliance is not secure. It can be if it's monitored and managed appropriately, but it doesn't mean it's inherently secure because you've checked off some boxes on a list.